But for some reason, in Sierra Leone, a lot of our brothers and sisters, not just there, but all over, we really think the first five books of Moses took place in France or Germany. That must be what some of y'all think because you believe Moses was a European. So when you examine the biblical texts and the biblical ge uh, geography, you find out it took place on the continent of Africa with nothing but black men and black women, okay? So what was Moses? A black man speaking to his black people, the 12 tribes of Israel. So what was the message he gave to us? Because it's us, the people of Sierra Leone. We're gonna prove that too. What was the message? If you break God's commandments, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. That is the message that Moses had given to us. Bear with me a sec. Okay. So a lot of times, I remember when I was in Sierra Leone for a month, one of the main questions that people often asked us was, what is the true religion? What is the true religion? Well, let me explain something to you. We just read Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, where Moses says, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to keep all his commandments, 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 that is what God commanded us to keep. That is what we were to teach all the nations in subjection. But what happened? We disobeyed. So as a result, we suffered God's curses the nations came up above us, and the nations began to create various false religions. Christianity is a man-made doctrine. Whether you call yourselves Roman Catholic, Episcopalian, uh, Baptist, Mormons, Lutherans, Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventists, those are all man-made. Pentecostal, all man-made religions. Even Islam, man-made. When you read the Bible, God said, keep my commandments and live. You can read about that all through the Bible. So now let's read one of the curses. Jump down to verse 61 for me. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and, chapter 28 and verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the Lord, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So here Moses says prophetically that if we don't keep God's commandments, the Lord will send every sickness and every plague upon us which is not written in the book of the Lord. Is COVID-19, the coronavirus, written in the Bible in those names? No, it's not. So that would be one of the curses that is that will be put upon us, the children of Israel, for breaking God's what? His commandments. His commandments. So this is why when you examine COVID-19, originally it was not affecting Black people at all. But within a matter of three weeks, all of a sudden Black people started getting hit like never before. Old black men, young black men, old black women, young black women, bam, 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 and mainly in America. It really didn't hit Africa that, that hard at all. So what did Bill Gates say? Bill Gates, the one you love, you know Bill Gates, the one that y'all let vaccinate your children, although he does, he's not a doctor. Let me tell you again, Bill Gates is not a doctor. Why are you letting him vaccinate your children? You're letting him put, you know, in America, if you're not a doctor and you put a needle in somebody's arm, you can be charged for that in a criminal offense. You're not a doctor, Bill Gates. And for you, my brothers and sisters, that allow this guy, who you don't know, to insert your young babies with vaccines, you're insane. That lets, that lets me know you love white supremacy. You love your oppressor. You love the race of the people that destroyed and hate you. So now, coronavirus is a plague, it's a pestilence, which is not recorded by that name in the Holy Bible. So it says, verse 61 again, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So here in America, we're getting hit like never before. 
okay? Is that the only place God prophesied these things would happen to us? No. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. No, as a matter of fact, let's go to Jeremiah 28. Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and, uh, and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of all prophesied both against many countries and against kingdoms of war and evil and of pestilence. You see that? It says the prophets. Now, another word for prophet. Let me give you a modern word for prophet. Preacher. Preacher is a modern word for prophet. To preach means to foretell. Foretell what? Things which are written for to come. So when any man calls himself a preacher, what he's literally saying is he's a prophet. So here in verse 8 again, it says, The prophets that have been before me, this is Jeremiah speaking, and before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries, so if you call yourself a preacher, you're supposed to be prophesying against many countries. Then it says, and against great kingdoms. So if you call yourself a preacher, you're supposed to be preaching against great kingdoms. Then it tells you what you're supposed to prophesy about against great countries and kingdoms. It says of war and of evil and of pestilence. So any preacher who calls himself a preacher a minister, a pastor, if he's not obeying Jeremiah 28, verse 8, leave their church. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what the Bible is about. The Bible is about the destruction of all nations and the uprise of the Israelites under Christ. That's what the entire Bible is about. This is why it says in verse 8 again, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So this is the message for the United States of America, Babylon the Great. War is coming, great evil is coming, and pestilence is here. This is the same message for the United Kingdom. This is the same message for England, for France, for Germany, for Russia, for Japan, for China, for Saudi Arabia. Because those that I just named and mentioned are countries, and those that I mentioned are great kingdoms. And I am prophesying that war is coming, and evil is coming, and pestilence is here. Let's see what Jesus Christ said about this. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew, the 24th chapter, and we want verse... Uh, Seven. This is the book of this is the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-four and verse seven. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. So what Christ said here is the same thing Jeremiah says. See, Christ was a prophet also. Not only was he the son of God, he was a prophet, he was a preacher. So he says, nation shall rise against a nation, kingdom against kingdom. That's the same thing the prophet Jeremiah said that we read in Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Then it says, and there shall be famines and pestilences. You know what pestilence is? Disease. Disease. Guess what coronavirus is? Disease. That's what it is. A sickness, a plague. That's what it is. Now, let me explain something to you. The World Health organization under Dr. Anthony Fauci. They had already had a patent on the coronavirus back in 2004. Then they sent uh, samples of the virus to Wuhan, China, and gave them 3.7, was it 3.7 million dollars or billion? I forgot whether it was million or billion. But anyway, they sent them 3.7, I'll say million just for, for speed's sake, to uh, experiment on this disease. And they knew that their facilities were not up to par. They were substandard. So guess what happened in Wuhan, China? Black America knew what happened. The virus got out. Wuhan, China got hit. And that disease went to Iran. It went to America as well. It, for some reason, this is lingering here. Okay? Because America's Babylon the Great. Okay? 
So Christ said pestilences would come and we're living it right now. So are we in the midst of Bible prophecy? Oh yes, you better believe we are. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, David. Let's go on back there. So we're reading the curses that Moses said would happen to us, okay? Jump down to verse 64. This is the, this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And then thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy father have known, even wood and stone. So the prophecy is that the Lord would scatter the 12 tribes of Israel. It says, scatter them among all people from the one end of the earth, even to the other. David, can you put the picture of the um, um, East Indian Ocean slave trade on the screen? You got red lines. Nope, that's not it. Go to the side. That's not it. Nope, nope, nope. Right there. Go back. Go back. Right there. What I want y'all to see is that this was the uh, during the time of the sub-Saharan slave trade. And I want you to see on the left side of the screen, you can see where they got slaves for. This, this preceded the transatlantic slave trade. They took slaves of our people from Ethiopia, from Zanj, from Kenya, Mombasa, Tanzania, Zanzibar, Mozambique, and Madagascar. And look, at the bottom, they took us to Reunion Island, Mauritius Island, and above it, let's go up above, follow those red lines. They took us to Saudi Arabia in Muscat. They took us to Pakistan in Sindh, in Karachi, in Gujarat. They also took us to uh, Goa in India. They took us to uh, Mangalore, Madras. They also took us to Sri Lanka in Colombo. Also look above the Persian Gulf. We also went tore into the Persian Gulf to Iran, okay? And Saudi Arabia. This is the part of the history that most people don't examine. Most of our people don't consider. Again, this preceded the transatlantic slave trade. This is when the, verse 64, again, I'm gonna read it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. What is the God we serve when they took us to Saudi Arabia and Iran? We started to worship Allah, the God of the, of the Arabs, and became, this is how we became Muslims. When they took us to Pakistan, what is the gods we served over there in Pakistan? Vishnu, okay? No, no, keep, David, you're moving over here. Keep, keep. Okay, what I want you to see in Pakistan, when they took us to Sin, Karachi, Gujarat, and Goa, we started to worship Vishnu. David, you took Pakistan off the screen, move it back. Yes, right there, right there, fine, leave it, stop. Oh my God, okay. Uh, this is how we started to worship the East Indian gods. What I need you to do, if you can, at home, write this down. You can write down CDs, S-I-D-D-I-S. -D -D I, I believe that's how you spell it. Those are black men from Africa worshiping East Indian gods. This was, there was also a group called the Dalit, which preceded them, which mingled heavily with the East Indians, okay? So this is how we worship these strange gods, from, it, from Islam to the Indian, uh, East Indian uh, gods, okay, to Arab gods. This is how, this is what it means when it says, verse 64, the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. David, give me the pictures of the Arabs. Give me the images of the Arabs. Right there at the bottom. I see this right, there. yes, blow them up big, blow it up bigger. I want y'all to see. See, y'all like to ignore what that the Arabs preceded the white man during the sub-Saharan slave trade. Look how they got us in the stocks, okay? And they were whipping us, beating us, castrating us, forcing us to worship Allah. First, forcing us to become Muslims. 
I want this picture to marinate on your brains, okay? Because in Sierra Leone, you got a lot of our people that say, oh, I'm Muslim. How did you become Muslim? I don't know. My father was Muslim. How did he become a Muslim? I don't know. Assalamu alaikum. Ah, oh, shut the hell up. Wa alaikum salam. It was forced on us. It was forced on us. They were murdering us. Give me the next picture. Don't get scared, David. Give me the next picture. You wait for that for control the level. Here's another one of the Muslims, the Arabs, checking our teeth. Our, notice our women have no shirts or no clothes on. They were selling us in the slave markets in Mecca. I'm going to say it again. Mecca was one of the world's largest slave ports. And they were selling our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, the Arabs. So I'm not making nothing up. I'm giving you history, 101. Get mad if you want, but the truth shall make you free. Give me the next image. Here we are again in the slave markets in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca. Let me say it again, in Mecca. They whipped us and beat us and castrated us. Look in the background, you see the chains on the necks of the men and women. Look in the back on the far left. I see it, you should be able to see this thing. Look at our mothers on the ground where the babies wanting some milk and the Arabs walking up standing behind us bidding for prices on how much they want to buy us for. Y'all better wake up, my black brothers and sisters, you Israelites. You are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Wake up. Give me the next picture, David. No, go back. Go back. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, 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 no. Right there. Go, go back. Go back. Go back. David, come on. Come on, David. Come on, David. Yeah, these are all the pictures. Uh... No, go. I just, I just saw it. You didn't click it, though. I'm looking at it at the bottom. At the bottom. Go down to right there. The last one right there. Go. David, over, over. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. David, go back. Keep. Come on, man. I'm looking at it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Right there. All right. Wow. Notice on the left, it says a portrait of two Arab slave traders. And look above in the middle, it says an Arab slave market. This is what the Bible means when a curse would be upon us in verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Which people were we scattered amongst right here in these images? The Arabs. It says, uh, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. In Mecca, they have something called the Kaaba stone. When you make your hajj, you must kiss the Kaaba stone, a sign of uh, love towards Allah, okay? You got to kiss the Kaaba stone, a black stone. That's called idolatry, okay? I want you all to understand that, David, give me the next map on the transatlantic slave trade. Right there. Blow it up a little bigger. Okay, go down a little bit, shrink it a bit, shrink it a little bit. Blow it up a little bit more. Blow um, it up except, a little bit more. Okay. You uh, Bishop, big. except I have to go where you want, because for now, um, it can, uh, this is uh, how, how uh, big it goes. Okay, all right. So read Deuteronomy 2864 again. This is, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy father have done, even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. I'm going to show you all something. Bear with me a second. I just got to find a picture, David. Just bear with me. I'm looking for it right now because I didn't send it. So I know if I ask you for it, you're not going to have it. <laughs> so what I need to do is just find it. All right. What you're looking at is a map 
of the transatlantic slave trade. Okay, this is the one we're all familiar with. We're all very familiar with this right here, these images, okay? I want you to look at the right side of the screen of, on the continent of Africa. It's, this is between the years 1650 and 1860. It's not a full map. This is only a partial map. What it got us from Senegal, Sierra Leone, West Africa slave regions, that included Ghana, uh, the West Coast, Slave Coast, Congo, Angola, and look what they took us to. I want you to look at the top of the screen. It says 0.3 million to Europe. 0.3 million to Europe. I want you all to see that thing right there. So they took us into Europe. Now, when we go across, notice it says 0.5 million to uh, US, Charleston. I mean, it says New York, Richmond, I'm sorry. When you go down, it says West Indies. 4.5 million of us were taken there, okay? So again, I'm not making it up. I'm giving y'all history right here in a nutshell. When you go over to Mexico City, 4.5 million. Central America, 0.2 million. South America, look, you got South Cartagena, Par Paramaribo in South America, Salvador, Brazil had 5 million. Lima had 0.5 million. Okay, let's look at the bottom words down here at the bottom, David. Okay, I want y'all to see that. Can you read that for us, David? Between um, 1650 and 1860, approximately 10 to 15 million enslaved people were transported from West Africa to the Americas. Mm. Most were shipped to the West Indies, Central America, and South America. You see that? Uh, David, I just uh, sent you a picture. I just sent you a picture I want you to put up on the screen. Yes. Now, I want you to see the picture on the left. When we came to North, Central, and South America, we worship this God right on the left, this white guy with yellow straight hair. And you all believe that that is Jesus Christ on the left. But that is not Jesus Christ on the left. That is Antichrist on the left because the Bible describes Jesus Christ. Can we get to the Revelation chapter one, David? Yes. Yes, sir. This is the book of Revelation chapter one and verse 14. Read verse 1 first. Okay. This is the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his seven things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Okay. So now, jump over. So this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ, all right? I want y'all to see that. Look at uh, verse 14. Verse four, this is the book of Revelation chapter one, verse one and verse 14. Uh, chapter one, verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Meaning Jesus Christ had Afro hair. Wool hair means Afro hair. David, give me this, the, the image of the Afro hair. It's over on the side. Okay, you see the image here, right? One picture has Afro hair, wool hair. The one on the left, the white one does not. David, give me the other image. There's a black man and black woman, photographs. Nope, go back up. Up, up, yep, yep. Keep going, keep going. It's right there. On my, yes, that's it. See, this is wool hair. Like lamb's wool. This is wool hair. Like lamb's wool. I'm going to say it again. When the Bible said his head and his hair, meaning the hair on his head and the hair on his face, was like wool, this is what it's talking about. You have black man and black woman comparison to a lamb. That's the same texture type of hair. Okay? Read again, David. 
This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, as white as and snow. His eyes, yeah. And his eyes were, were as flame of fire. Meaning the whites of his eyes were red with wine. When you read Genesis 49, can you get that for us, David? Genesis 49, yes, verse 12, where Moses prophesied about the coming Messiah. This is the book of this is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, and verse 12. His, his eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Okay, his eyes shall be red with wine. Remember. Christ's first miracle was he turned water into wine. Let's go back to Revelation 1 now. Verse 14 again. So now we know what it means. His head and his hands shall be white like wool, and his eyes as a flame of fire. Now we understand. Go ahead. Verse 15. Verse 15? Yes. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if the bird in the furnace. So let's get the next image, David, about brass. No, the other way, other way, other way, other way, other way. Yes, you just passed it. It's right, yes. Okay, I want y'all to see brass. Blow it up bigger, David, at the top. Yes, blow it up. Brass, you can see on the left, it's a, very, it's a light brown. When you burn brass, it gets very dark like a black man, like the brother you see right there. So when the Bible says, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, this is what the Bible's describing. It describes Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as a black man. Just like you, just like me. So we're not making nothing up. So here's the question. Where in the hell did you get that white image from? Can you put that image back now? Put the white image on the screen again. Where in the hell? I want y'all to look at these two images. Make it a little smaller. The one on my right side is the biblical description of Jesus Christ. But the one on my left, the one on my left, that's the devil. The Bible speaks of the white man That's with right. his blue eyes and his yellow hair and his pink red skin. Are you insane in Sierra Leone? Wake up! I want y'all to see that Jesus Christ looks just like you, just like me. But you know what you asked? Here comes the question. Well, if the Bible described Jesus as black, why the white man give us the white man? Listen, let me tell you something. Your enemies will never teach you anything that will lead you from oppression. I'm going to say it again. Your enemies or your oppressor will never teach you true history if it will help you and cause you to leave from under his hand of oppression. That's why. You got to understand war. You black men, I'm see, I, I expect that from women. But you mentioned understand war. You should know your enemy will not give you the weapons necessary for you to save yourselves from him. Are you stupid? So of course the white man is going to give you his image to keep you in subjection, to keep you docile and fearful and afraid. When the Bible, if you, this is why the white man set up laws forbidding us to write, forbidding us to read, I should say first and foremost, because if you can't read, you can't write. Okay, this is why the literacy rate in Sierra Leone is so high or so low. The literacy rate is so low. There were so many men and women I met in Sierra Leone who said to me on the street, I cannot read. I can't read. Where, where in the hell is all the money from the diamond mines going? It's going to the hands of the white man. Meanwhile, your sons and daughters in Sierra Leone can't read, can't write can barely put food on the table, have no shoes on their feet, got to wear the same clothes every day, every day, every day. And none of you men got a problem with that? None of you men got a problem with that? You need to be ashamed of yourselves. Now, 
So now what happened? If Jesus is black, let me, let me uh, put, put the last image up on the screen, David. The last image. Yes. I want you to take a good look at that picture right there. These are four photographs of the Greek Orthodox. What are they doing? They're repainting all black images into white man's image. Zoom in on the bottom left, David. Zoom in on the bottom left. Bottom left. Left, David. Left. That's my right. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Bottom. This is it. Look in the background. You got black Jesus in the background. But in the foreground, the white man is painting over the black image, making it white. Go above it, David. Go up above it. I want the picture above it on top. Okay. What I want you to look at this white man, but look at the painting. I know it's kind of blurry. It's kind of blurry. Let me see if I can get a clearer one. I'm going to help you all out here. Bear with me. Y'all just bear with me. David. I want this bishop picture right in the next, uh, 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 Bishop, in the next uh, uh, three minutes, three minutes, uh, we'll be going live for, we'll be opening the phone lines for people to call in. Okay. Well, That's I want y'all to see all the black images right here. The white man got paint back here. He's going to paint. Let me put it over. He's going to paint these black images white. Now I'm going to move up. I'm going to go to the side. If you can see right there, look what he's doing. He's repainting the black images into white man image. This is what happened in history. This is what's going on to this very day. Yes, that right there. That's what they do because we've had our images all over Europe. Okay. Why? Because we ruled Europe for a thousand years after Rome fell in 193 AD. I'm going to show you something real heavy right here. When the Renaissance era came, I'm going to show you. Hey, David, I want this on the screen. Put this big on the screen, David. You can X out of that. X out of those. David, yeah. it's still not yes, on the sir. screen yet. Still not? No. All I see is images of the pictures we just saw, and I see your phone connection. I don't want to see your phone. I want to see this book on the big screen. Yes. Thank you. All right. Here's a book called The Image of the Black in Western Art. Okay? Now I'm going to show you the in this book, they show you what the white man did to us historically in paintings. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to page 171st. David, can you zoom in on that picture right there? Uh, I, I don't, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not possible, sir. It's a live video. Okay. All right, I see these black lines. I don't know what those lines are for. About myself. Okay. Go back, go back. I want you to see this black man as a prince right here. You had a black prince. Let me see where it's from. This is from, this is St. Maurice. Okay, this is in 1425 Germany, a black prince. But what I really want you to see is next to it, how you see a black Moor, an Israelite before a white man who came in power. And look what they're about to do. This is how the white man got us out of Europe. Notice they're about to kill him with the sword. This is what they did to us. They murdered us. They killed us. They banished us out of Europe. This is the history. They give you history in these books. And it's amazing because Bishop, Henry Louis Gates, when I read his writings, it's like he was totally confused as to what's going on. Bishop, it's like he didn't have a clue. And he's supposed to be some kind of college professor. Let's deal with the slave first. I want to deal with the slave. You black men in Sierra Leone, the white man has robbed you and oppressed you for hundreds of years. And for some reason, you have a problem with your brother, me, your people. 
saying that Jesus looks like you. I'm the enemy now. Not the man that steals the diamonds from Sierra Leone. Not the man in the IMF that says your dollar is garbage compared to the America. Not, they're not the enemy, but I'm the enemy. Let me tell you something. If the white man gave you a false Jesus, he gave you a false gospel. And I'm going to prove it in the Bible. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. David, you got it? I'm reading. Yes, uh, I got it. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye may well bear with him. So now, let's explain that verse in detail. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. Who's that talking about? The white man is the one that came throughout Sierra Leone and the continent of Africa, in fact, the world, and taught a Jesus that was never spoken of in the Bible. A white man with pink, red skin, blue eyes, and yellow hair that you got in Sierra Leone, that you worship in your churches. That was never preached about as the Messiah. Let's read it again. For he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received. What is the spirit that comes with another Jesus? A seducing, lying spirit comes. Like the spirit of, it doesn't matter what he looks like. It's his message. That lying, seducing spirit must stop. Now watch the next part. It says, or another gospel which ye have not accepted. What comes with another Jesus? Another spirit comes with it and another gospel. Put that false image of Jesus back on the screen for me. Put it back. So the one on the right is the one described in the Bible with hair like wool, whose feet like burned in a furnace. What did he teach? Christ taught, keep the commandments, and I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did this false Jesus teach on the left? with the yellow thin hair, with the pink red skin and the blue eyes. He came saying, God loves everybody. He loves everybody, everybody. And by that lie, this is why the white man comes to Sierra Leone, rapes your mothers, your fathers, steals your diamonds, your bauxite, steals your natural minerals, or sets a finite and economic system up and makes you poor, one of the poorest nations on earth next to Liberia. But you don't got a problem with that, my brother. You got a problem with me saying that Jesus is black according to the Bible. You have made me your enemy. Hey, David, give me Proverbs 331. No, 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 no. Give me Matthew 24, verse 4 and 5. That's what I want. Matthew 24, where Christ warned you about a man would come saying that they're Christ. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Who came throughout the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, and colonized Africa saying they are Christ? It was the Dutch, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, the Germans, the English. They all came with that false image of Jesus, that white image of Jesus, and gave you a false spirit, a false gospel. And you're mad at me? You're mad at me for standing up for the truth of the Bible. I'm your enemy. Brother, my brother, my brother. Oh, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. Okay? This white image of Jesus is the Antichrist. This white image of Jesus is the image of the beast that the world would worship. Give me that in Revelation 13, verse 7, please. This is, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given, given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So, go ahead. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose Wait a name... Minute. I want y'all to see that. Once this white man conquered us, it said everybody on the earth would worship him. 
or you can't really see these images again. David, put this up. Put this up, David, on the screen. Big screen, big screen. I want y'all to see this right here. Let me move it over. You see the white man cutting, about to cut the brother's head off. This is what they did during the Renaissance when they conquered us. Once they conquered us, then they set up their false images of Jesus. Let me explain the history, because I know the brother that I called don't know no history. They conquered us in Italy. <clears throat> they started to uh, banish us in 1342. They conquered us in Spain. They banished us in 1462. They conquered us in England and started to move us out around 1422. But some of us still remain behind. Then they got us in France in 1403. The, you ministers don't know no history. You ministers don't know no Bible. Y'all need to come learn again. Don't let your pride get you in trouble. Just sit down, relax, listen, observe, and learn. Just start all over again. That's why Christ said, except you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. When he says be born again means what? Start all over again in your learning, in your understanding. That's what being born again is. Because let me tell you something. Everything black men and black women know is based upon white supremacy. Everything. I'm going to say it again. Everything black men and black women know about the Bible is based on white supremacy. I'm going to give you an example. Was Jesus Christ born on Christmas Day, December 25th? Can y'all call in? I want a Bible verse. I want that same minister, you that call, call back with a Bible verse that says Jesus Christ was born December 25th on Christmas, and we are commanded to keep that day. I want the scripture. I'm showing you how y'all don't know the Bible. I'm showing you how you are filled with white man lies. And it is not divisive. In fact, John 8.32, read that, David. John 8.32. This is the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You hear what Christ said? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How come our brothers okay. and sisters in Sierra Leone are yeah, not free? Yes. yes, Bishop, we'll have to be signing out because we are already above time, Bishop. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, like always, uh, if you want to get more and more understanding, reach us on the number 08812 uh 7865. 08812-7865. 7865. And if you want to know more of the um, understanding, if you want to join the IUIC Sierra Leone group and ask your questions, more questions, reach us on the number 088 7865. And also on Facebook, you can reach us on IUIC Sierra Leone, IUIC Sierra Leone. Also on uh, 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 YouTube, you can reach us at um, IUIC in the classroom, IUIC in the classroom. So um, with that, uh, Bishop, you have any last words before we, we close up? Yeah, visit our website, www.israelunite.org. And listen, I love my brothers and sisters. Don't take my fiery passion for hate. It's nothing but love. I love y'all. All praises to the Lord. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.